Hi everyone! So yesterday I went to London and I went to the Castle Art store and I got some quite a few goodies so I thought that I would open them up and show them with you. Castle Art didn't ask me to do this video, I'm just doing it to show you what I got and to test the products out with you. So with that note, let's get started! Okay, so the first item I've got to show you is my wooden mannequin. So I got the 30cm 12 inch mannequin with movable limbs. So let's check it out! Okay, so here's the wooden mannequin. And as you can see, it's completely poseable. So all the joints, they move. So this moves up and down, you can move the shoulder joint, so it's pretty poseable, um, which is a good thing. So the reason I got this was to help out my drawing and posing people, so hopefully that'll make everything better. And yeah, his limbs move, his uh, legs move as well, so that's a good thing, and so do the feet I think yeah the ankle joints move so that's good so you could get him to sit sit down and you can move him about so it's pretty versatile which is a good thing on to the next thing okay so the next thing I got was some new brushes so I got 10 artist brushes and they're from the Cassart Synthetic Brush Collection. So they're ideal for oil, acrylic and watercolour. So with that in mind, yeah, these are the brushes. Thank you. Glare. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's open it up and we'll uh, we'll have a look. Okay, so it comes in this nice fold up and it says on the bottom, let's fill this town with artists. So it's really nice, really sturdy, really durable. It has a zip on the side and on the inside we have our 10 brushes. So it says that it's 100% polyester, so that's a good thing. So let's have a look at our brushes. So we have, we'll go from left to right. So we have our fan brush. So it's fan brush. It's quite nice texture actually, the synthetic, it's rather soft. So, and this is a number two brush. Um, as you can see, uh, it's gonna, there we go, number two, no, no, not gonna focus, okay, number two brush, um, so there's that one, it's got a nice, uh, the handle is, is quite nice, it's got like a grainy effect, but you'll be able to see that better with some of the bigger brushes. The next brush along is a number four, so they all come, except the fan brush, they all come with this plastic barrel on them to keep the brushes and the bristles intact and safe. So this is a number four brush, as you can see, if it'll focus, no. Nope. No, okay. So it's quite short, quite good. Uh, again, nice and soft. So it's gonna focus. No. Nice and soft. So this will be quite good for the uh, nice small strokey details. Uh, yeah, and as I said, the barrel's quite nice which is good. So I'm just going to pop the cap back on just to keep that nice and safe. The next brush along is the number eight brush. I don't know if you can see it. 
No. Mm. No. It's a bit blurry, unfortunately, but again, it comes with the plastic barrel. And let's have a look. Ooh, that one was a bit stiff. So this brush is got a nice long uh, the bristles are quite nice and long and yeah it's, it's quite nice texture is quite nice it feels quite soft so as you can see the bristles are quite nice quite soft which would be ideal for doing long strokes and as I said the barrel's quite nice so I'm gonna pop the the plastic back on without bending any of the bristles just to keep them nice and safe okay so the next one we have is a number six again it's got the plastic on it number six they are full length brushes so they are quite long which is good number six the bristles are quite hard at first but if you just bend them they will break and they will become usable for painting so always a plus <laughs> um so once again a metal barrel uh, for where the bristles are connected to the handle so that's quite nice nice and shiny looks good quality and again, the uh, the barrel, uh, the handle is quite nice. Feels nice and sturdy to paint with. So we'll put the pop the plastic back on that. Our next one is a number four, and it's a little bit smaller than the number six. Just pop the bristles. So it's quite nice, quite small, quite thin. I have noticed when you do pop them from being solid, they do fan out a little bit. It's a nice, small, rounded brush. Next one, I'll just leave that one out. <laughs> okay, so our next one is a number two. And it is the uh, smallest of them all, I believe. Yes, the smallest. So we'll have a look at that. So quite a small bristles, which is good for nice small details. And the barrel again is quite nice. The metal bit's quite shiny, quite sturdy. And yeah, that one's number two. Okay, the next one I see is a number six again. Have we had a number six? Yes, we have. Okay, so this number six is a flat bristled, uh, br flat bristled, sorry, flat bristled whereas the previous one was a longer brush so these are both number sixes but the uh the barrels i'm not sure if you can tell they are a different color slightly and the bristles are different the one that i'm showing you has the small rounded bristles at the top and it is quite thin as you can see I'm not, as you can see it is quite quite thin so that'd be good for getting quite nice textured strokes the second last one i'm going to show you is a one and a half so it's quite chunky so we'll have a look break off the bristles there we go 
So this one and a half inch brush is quite long actually. Um, it looks good. It, it would be for using mostly in backgrounds and large areas. So again, it's got the one and a half written on it and it also says Cassart and it also says synthetic on it. So that's good. Again, the texture is nice and soft, nice and it's good quality. Um, yeah, so we'll get along to the last brush. And this brush is a half as well. And it has a smaller uh, bristles. So it's for more uh, of the, you can do fine lines on it. Uh, and things like that so I'm not sure if you can see but they are quite thin compared to the other half brush the length of the bristles are quite different so this is the one I showed previously and this is the one I'm showing now they also have a different tone of color in the bristles which is a nice difference and the barrels are also a different color which is quite handy but you can tell apart the wads because of the bristle size okay and i'll give you a quick view of the case so we'll take these out okay so the case as i said is a 100 percent polyester i will be taking that sticker off uh, so the case is quite sturdy so as I said nice black case and then on the inside it has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven pockets for brushes and they are quite small on this side and they are quite large on this side the cover also comes with two inserts where I'm sure that you could put any scrap pieces of watercolor or any test swatches you are going to be using there is also uh there is one on each side so they're not very big but you could fit things in there you could also i guess put some paper on top of the paint brushes if you wished so it's a nice little travel case keeps gonna keep my brushes nice and clean and tidy and keep them in good quality which is the general idea okay so on to the next thing and uh i hope you're enjoying this just gonna let you know quickly as well when you do break the bristles for the first time so that you are able to use the brushes they do leave quite a mess so just be aware of that if you are opening somewhere be sure to clean up your mess afterwards okay so the next item i got is some winsor and newton cotman watercolors so this is the packet as you can see and i got the half pan studio set which has 45 half pans in it so this is what the packaging looks like it tells you exactly what's in it on the back and it also shows you a picture of what's inside so let's have a look and open it so. so this is what the inside looks like and it also comes with a little pamphlet so on the inside of the pamphlet it tells you about the cotman watercolors just here so it tells you about their transparency their strength and it says that it comes in 40 colors so it's just a bit about that 
And then on the inside is a legend of what the colours should look like. So these are all the different colours that I should have inside the case. So this is the case and as you can see it says Windsor and Newton on the front. So it's a nice plain case on the front and on the back it's just nice and plain, it has these grids and the hinges. So let's take a look inside. This is the first time I'm opening this so whatever my reaction is, is going to actually be my first initial reaction. So as we open it up it looks like there is somewhere that you can mix colours which folds out. So oh my god. So as you can see it folds out quite large and I was right you can mix your colours here. So we'll go in for a bit of a closer look and I will be able to show you all the colours. Okay, so here is a close-up of one of the watercolours. So as you can see, it's a half pan watercolour. The one that I picked out is Yellow Orca. So you can buy these individually if you need to pick up a refill anywhere. Most craft shops do sell them. So all the ones in this packet are actually Series 1. So I know that you can actually get series up to series four, I think it is. And yeah, they just come like this and yeah, so you can stick them in to your watercolor pan afterwards and be able to get refills quite easily. So this is a nice close-up. So let's get to opening up these packets. the watercolors unwrapped so all of the colors do have their names written on the side so if you do need to replace one you can always look at the side of the half pan and it will tell you what the name is the half pans come like this so nice and cute and they some of them did actually pop out i will show you one that did if I could find it 
Right. So this is one of the, this is sepia, as you can see. And while I was undoing this, it actually popped out. So this is what the half pan of a watercolor paint actually looks like. So you can see the size with my thumb. It is actually quite small, but it will go quite a long way. And they come in these little half pans. So I am now going to show you a watercolor swatch. So sit back, relax, enjoy the music and enjoy the watercolor swatches. Okay, so the next item I got at Cassart was this a Windsor and Newton masking fluid. So this is really good when you want to mask off a bit of your work that you have previously done and you don't want to get watercolours on it. So it actually smells quite terrible. So uh, if you don't like the smell, just open a window. Um, or don't stick your nose in it like I did. Um, I'm not going to try it out just because I don't have time today and I don't have a project that I need to do it on. So we'll go on to the next thing. So the next thing I got is an aquash brush. So unfortunately it is written all in Japanese I think it is. So I can't actually let you know the instructions unfortunately but we'll have a look anyway okay so this is the brush and it says pentel japan on it i'm not sure if you can see that no okay so it says pentel pentel japan on it and it has a nice squishy barrel for all the water and then it has a cap to keep your bristles all right. It has a brush nib like this. It's quite soft. And then the bottom bit to fill up the water is also unscrewable. So it comes in, it comes apart in three bits. So I'm going to put some water in it and then we are going to have a little bit of a test. Alrighty, so as you can see, I have filled up the water part of the 
aquash pen and it does actually have a line I'm not sure if you can see it but it does actually have a line where you are to fill the water up so let's try it out eh so pop it back on this is the first time I'm using it as well so excuse if I fail at uh fail at using it <laughs> so I'm just going to use some of my old watercolors and some paper some watercolor paper so these are WH Smith uh, watercolors and just some I think it's WH Smith watercolor paper yeah so well good <laughs> okay so my brush is actually already getting wet which the bristles are already getting wet so that's actually really good so let's try with some red so if you give it a little squeeze the water does calm down and then you just need to hold it gently and the water will come out you will be able to make it it's perfect for traveling and then we will test it out on the paper okay so i've zoomed this in nice and close for you and as you can see i might have left this a little too long but with the water in it if you don't pick up any more paint any more watercolor the water in the actual pen does make it lighter as you go along now you can pick up some more color if you wish so we'll do that i'm not going to add any more water to uh, the paint but as you can see it's got it's actually quite quite a little nifty brush so as long as you don't squeeze the uh the barrel you won't have any more water coming out so if you just hold it gently it should be all right and the brush the bristles on the brush is actually quite nice you can get some nice feathery flicks from it which is great so yeah and with this you can just grab some tissue push down a bit of water and it should become clean with a tissue as I said I've not done this before so Apologies if I'm doing it wrong. If somebody has a better idea, please leave it in the comments below. So, okay, so to me that's clean. Um, other people might disagree, but I'm not sure if that's going to focus. But to me that's clean. So I could quite happily go on and use another color and it would be it would be quite okay it's not going to mix up the true colors and using just that little test i have only used a minimal amount of water as you can see it was filled up to the line and i've really only used that maybe an inch of water so it's great for traveling um traveling you could use it pretty much anywhere on the train in the park at your grand's house pretty much anywhere so yeah okay we'll move on to the next thing i got so the next item i got is a pentel brush pen the reason i got this is because I watch YouTubers Jellybee and Bailey J 
and I've both seen them use it so I thought that I would give it a try to help ink out all of my drawings. So as you see it's in the packet I've just pulled out the ink. It does come with four ink cartridges. There isn't an ink cartridge in the pen at the moment so it doesn't come with one in it but it does come with four ink refills. Now I'm not sure whether or not you can buy the refills separately. I think you can. If I can find a website I will pop it in the link below. So let's go and pop a... oh and it comes with instructions. That's good. <laughs> so as you can see inside the packaging it actually comes with instructions and visual instructions as well which is perfect for me. <laughs> so it says it in three different languages and they are there's English on this side and then there are I think German and French maybe on this side. I am not 100% sure my languages are a bit of a shambles so <laughs> so it does show you how they're done so I just thought I would pop that little bit in so you won't have to worry about messing up the instructions just follow the picture and the instructions so let's put it together got the cartridge in um, as I said first time using it so I wasn't quite sure when you do put the ink cartridge in the little refills um, you need to it does say firm I obviously wasn't doing it firm enough I didn't want to break it but you need to there's gonna be two clicks there's gonna be like a crunchy click and then if you push it up a bit further you'll hear another crunchy click and that way there's actually a bit of white at the top so I'll just show you another refill so this is what they look like and the white tip actually needs to go all the way in <laughs> I didn't realize that um, but I'm a bit of a goose sometimes so this is the brush and it has a lovely Japanese symbol on the front. I'm not sure what it is. I'm sure somebody will let me know. And it says Pentel Japan on the back. So this is what the brush looks like on the inside. So it's got some nice bristles. So we will check it out. So I've got some paper here. Now I'm not sure how long this is going to take. So I might have to speed up the video just a little bit just to work it out. It's probably on the instructions. <laughs> so bear with. Hold pen vertically, tip down until ink drains. Two bristles and then make test strokes. So the instructions do say that you've got to keep it vertical and then just do some test strokes just to get the ink flowing. So it does take a little bit, but as you can see, oh, this is a nice brush. <laughs> now this is my first time doing this, so no haters. <laughs> There we go. So this is actually an amazing brush. <laughs> I can see why they use it now. And yeah, you just gotta let the uh, the ink flow a little bit. Mine might have to 
wait a little bit. I will be storing mine with the tip down just so that I won't have to worry about doing this every time. But it is actually quite nice. I'm, I'm quite surprised. <laughs> Even writes good. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there we go, I think it's working now. I know it's probably not for this, but eh. Like, look at that, it's lovely. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> so, yeah, you just gotta let it do its thing, and then it'll be alright. Awesome! Yay, you have a brush pen! <laughs> okay, on to the next thing. Okay, sorry this is so going to be such a long video. So, I'm almost at the end, don't worry. <laughs> so the third last thing I have is I have a Dalla Rowney Soft Kneadable Potty Eraser. So I got this just because I got really, really cheap erasers from Poundland and old school supplies and they are just oh they tear out my paper they remove all my ink they just they're just terrible <laughs> so i thought i'd give this a go i have seen other artists use something like this use an actual putty razor eraser sorry <laughs> so we'll, we'll try it out eh so it smells a bit funky, but don't worry about that. So it is actually quite ooh, <laughs> quite flexible, as you can see. And it is a bit squishy. It says on the back, it said, Mold to a fine point for stippling chalk, pencil, or charcoal drawings and erasing ink for spirit duplicate work, etc. So it's always good to know. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll give it a test. I'm just going to pull out one of my pencils. So the pencil that I've just grabbed is a 5H. Not that you can see because my camera won't... Oh, there we go. So it's a 5H. So I'm just going to do some scribbles. There we go. Do some really thick, hard sort of lines and we will see what this putty eraser does so we'll go with the small lines first nice thin ones this eraser is huge <laughs> so i'm not oh you can actually see so this is actually amazing so you can push it down for a Need to edge, excuse the green, that's from the watercolour earlier. So it is actually pretty good. I'm surprised. <laughs> Getting off the thicker lines. It's probably the paper as well. It is just printer paper. And I'm doing a shocking job at removing this, as you just saw. So we'll try the thick line. That pretty much takes it off so I'm sure it would be a lot better with actually some <laughs> good paper uh, but I didn't bother to grab any actually I can't seem to find my drawing book but if I could <laughs> oh I found it give me a sec and we'll test it in actual paper okay so I'm going to grab my drawing book so we can actually test on some sketch paper, which is good. So, I don't know, I'll just write hello. <laughs> Seems to be the generic test typography sort of word. So, needable razor again. Oh, this is much better. <laughs> so, as you can see, it does work quite well. 
on paper that's actually used for sketching <laughs> instead of printer paper. So, which is good, yay! <laughs> I have a proper eraser. It's actually doing quite a good job. Usually my other erasers or my old ones, uh, they just tear up my paper. So, as you can see, that's that's pretty much gone. Um, awesome. And as the eraser warms up, it does shred a little, but needable. So you can just knead it back into place and it doesn't really matter. Cool. All right. Second last thing now. Not too long. Sorry. <laughs> Ready. So second last thing I got was some, I finally got my hands on some crystal resin. Hooray. <laughs> I've been looking everywhere for this. And thankfully, CalSart had a 75% off sale, which was absolutely fantastic because this stuff's expensive. <laughs> so the one I got was the 750 mil. So we'll check it out. I really only sort of opened the lid. I haven't actually used it or tested it. Um, I'm sure that at a later date I can put up a testing video if you'd like. Okay, so as you can see inside of the box we have, it says there is gloves, it's always helpful. <laughs> Two Nope, it just says protective gloves. So you've got two gloves, they kind of look like the sort of thing that you will find in a box hair dye kit. But I have a box of latex gloves, so I will probably use those instead. It then comes with two measuring cups. So two measuring cups and they're both 30 mil and they've got little handles on them. Nice and plastic. It's always good. <laughs> this is my hard knot, so it is only 250 mil, as you can see. It does come in a white plastic container, little handle, and it says hard a B. This is resin A, <laughs> so it is 500 mil, and this is the first part of the mixture. So this one also comes in a white horrible container so we've got two what are they oh two two mixers <laughs> i was gonna say stirrers <laughs> two mixers so i'm sure that if you needed more than the two if you were doing smaller projects then just go to your local craft store or even your local shop and they should sell popsicle sticks and the last thing is a booklet Oh, it's a user guide. Oh, that's, that's really helpful, actually. So, it does run out after six months. If it doesn't run out, it, it goes off. So, make sure you use it in six months after opening. And it shows you the hardening time. Not sure if you can see this. Shows hardening time, how to use, ideal storage temperature, so that's the unmade mixtures, well, the separate ingredients for the mixture. It's how to store them, how to clean, and then the instructions, and then just some tips and precautions. So on to the lucky last thing. Okay, so the lucky last thing that I got is actually some Fimo clay. So I got Fimo soft and I got six different colors as you can see they are all the 57 grams or the two ounce packets and they are all made by Stedlov. so i got number no okay i all got i uh, got sahara so that's uh this color it's a nice sort of uh terracotta looking color which is nice can use that <laughs> Uh, this one is plum. This is plum. I'm not sure that you can repeat that. Um, plum. I got cherry red. This is cherry red. I got 
peppermint. I got uh, no violet. Oh, I think it's supposed to be purple. No, purpure. Okay, purpure. <laughs> Pure, and the last one I got was Flesh Light because I don't actually have any of that. So these all are 30 minutes in the oven. They do have packaging instructions on them. Please follow them when you are using them so that you don't wreck your... Excuse the ambulance. I'm sorry, I live on a main road. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, just follow the packaging instructions and your creations will be okay. Well, they should be okay. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. Thanks for watching. Sorry it was a bit of a long video. I'm still getting used to sort of actually making videos and <laughs> putting them up onto YouTube for people to watch. So if you did enjoy it and you did stay all the way to the end, thank you. <laughs> and... If you did like it, make sure you leave a thumbs up and share. And if you want, do subscribe because it'll show me how many people are actually interested in watching my videos and it will encourage me to put up more more often. Okay, so that's all for me and keep crafting. See you later. Bye.